Well then, buddy, it is time once again for us to uncover the truth that has been hiding right under our noses <laughs> with yet another installment of Mandela Effect Moments in Music History. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And basically, this uh, bit boils down to there are an infinite number of alternate dimensions that surround us at all times, and each one of these infinite number of alternate dimensions has an infinite number of, of, of they, they equal to an infinite number of possibilities. So it's possible, very possible, for someone to accidentally jump from one dimension to another dimension that is, for all intents and purposes, exactly the same as the dimension that you were originally in, but for a few tiny differences. Therefore, I honestly believe that I am somehow stuck in the wrong dimension, and the proof of this is hiding in popular American music and songs that somehow exist without society crumbling to pieces! <laughs> now, we've done a number of these before. Jay-Z sampled Annie, and everyone's okay with that! Yes. Uh, so, I've, hit so I've been working on an animation this time. Yeah. I was working on an animation and I was looking for just some noise to drive some animations. Yeah. So I started YouTubing up a, a bunch of songs and there it is. One night in Bangkok. Yeah. Yeah. There's a hit song from a musical number from a play about chess. That, that was a massive hit. And people are okay with that. All 80s weekend on KJOZ 104.7, The Zone. And they're playing hit 80s songs. So they play uh, Karma Chameleon. And they play uh, Footloose. And then they play One Night in Bangkok, a musical number from a play about chess. And everyone's <laughs> okay with that. And then, of course, there's a popular hard rock song with a Boom! Solo! <laughs> and it plays on the radio. And everyone's that. Oh, this is the song with the Spoon Solo. I'm totally okay with that. And now, this one is uh, half Mandela Effect moments in music history and half maybe like Steve's historical approximations, a little bit of that thrown in. Because this week, we're going to be discussing MTV and a hit song and socks. Okay. It's very weird. This week's story starts in the year 1993. And you know, Bunny, a lot happened in the year 1993. Uh, yes. So let's rip on it. The year was 1993. In the year 1993, this is a fact. Disney's Aladdin was released on VHS, and it sold 10.6 million copies. Get this. It sold 10.6 million copies in its first week. Wow. In one week, they sold 10.6 million copies. And then you got to think, like, how much was a brand new VHS tape in 1993? What, like 1995, 2495? Yeah. Like, that's an insane amount of money. So they sold 10.6 million copies of Aladdin on VHS in one week. That was a massive record that wouldn't be broken uh, until the release uh, of The Kid's Guide to the Internet, which sold 27.8 bajillion copies <laughs> in just two hours. Yes. In the year 1993, the most watched TV show was, of course, of course... America's favorite talk show, the Chevy Chase Show. Oh. Which ran for 27 years until Chevy Chase's overdose on obscurity. <laughs> In 1993, uh, Jurassic Park was released in theaters. Did you know? Nope. This is true. That the sound that the velociraptors make is actually the sound of turtles doing it. I believe I heard that somewhere, yes. The true story. In so 1990... Now, now you know the sound of two turtles fucking. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now, the majority of Americans know what it sounds like when two turtles have sex. That's bizarre. Yes. In 1993... It's got to be a website. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a Japanese website. In 
In 1993, I'm, I'm very passionate about this. I told a number of people about this. In the year 1993, the Branch Davidians had a very successful bake sale, and they had a very fun lock-in at the local rec center. But does anybody focus on that in 1993? <laughs> no, they don't. No. Oh, let's focus on the one bad thing that happened to the Branch Davidians in Waco, Texas in 1993. What about all the other good things that happened to the Branch Davidians in 1993? You know? Yeah. So they had one bad day or a nine day standoff of bad days. You know, there's other, if, there's other days in a year. And if it doesn't get any worse than that, from there, it becomes a TV movie starring one of the guys from Wings. Yeah, one of the guys from Wings. Here's another overlooked bit of history for the year 1993. David Koresh, he was an incredible tap dancer. I, I I had heard that. But does the media focus on that? No. And Marjo in, Gortner wannabe. Yeah. In 1993, athlete Ben Johnson was caught competing while on the juice. Mm -hmm. So he got banned from all athletics for life. But let's let's pause that and rewind for a second. He was banned from all athletics. Doesn't that seem a tad bit extreme? Was Jared Fogle banned from all sandwiches? They got Jared Fogle in trouble. Okay, well, how about this? Is Lance Armstrong banned from all cycles? Mm -hmm. Is he going to like the gym like, and he's like, I'm going to go. But ben Johnson was on the juice. Okay, so, so, so when was, Ben Johnson is in his backyard throwing footballs with his son, somebody comes and arrests yes, him. Yeah, somebody comes and arrests him because he's playing like Excuse that. me, sir, you were banned from all sports. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so he, he so this poor bastard can't even go curling if he wanted to. Yeah, so like... Hacky sack! Hacky sack! <laughs> so him and, his, him and his friends plan to go bowling, so they go to the bowling alley and the F, like, a massive team of, like, 100 FBI agents are already at the bowling alley parking lot with, like, a gun. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Around. Meanwhile, meanwhile, put down Lance, that pool cue. <laughs> meanwhile, Lance Armstrong like sits on a tricycle and suddenly he's tackled by like thirty <laughs> police officers. <laughs> also, in 1993, a young man named William Niederst, William Niederst, and his William. BFF Matt Crocco were students at Kent State University when Niederst learned uh, of a new school uh, for performing arts opening up in England, the Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts, a university that was opening up with money from Sir Paul McCartney. This is Paul McCartney's performing arts school in Liverpool. Nice. So William Nieder says, oh, I always wanted to kind of be a rock star, whatever. So he signs up, he gets accepted, and suddenly he goes to England where he is literally being taught music under Ringo freaking star. <laughs> so this young, white, nerdy dude, William Nieder, is suddenly like in Liverpool learning music from Ringo Starr, and Ringo Starr's like, oh, William... You're such a great student. You really understand the music. Maybe one day we can record together. I'm Ringo Starr. <laughs> so so Ringo Starr. What the fuck exactly happened to Ringo Starr there? I mean, as soon as he, he left the Beatles, he became just a really creepy fucking dude. Yeah. You yeah. know? Like, yeah. like if, if you were in a public bathroom... And somebody who looked like Ringo Starr walked in, you'd feel really fucking uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was here, learning under 50% of the Beatles, that William Nieder said, oh, if I'm going to be a, a big rock star, yeah. I need to adopt a new, more rock and roll, fancy prance about stage name. Yeah. So that's when he lost the William Niederst and became Liam Lynch. Liam Lynch? Who the fuck is Liam Lynch? Uh, he 
directed the Tenacious D movie. He directed and co-wrote Sarah Silverman's Jesus is Magic uh, uh, comedy movie. He also uh, played with the Foo Fighters, Queens of the Stone Age, and he recorded music with Ringo Starr. I have the song on my phone. It's good. <laughs> Liam Lynch had a very good career. But for now, okay. he's, in a for he's in a foreign country. The majority of the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts are obviously people from England. And suddenly here's just this nerdy guy from L.A., He's in a foreign country, and, and he's especially missing his BFF, Matt Croco, who's still at Kent State University. So what he does is, um, Lee, Liam Lynch and Matt Croco, they're constantly talking on the, on the phone with each other. Liam Lynch secretly records their silly, stupid phone conversations. <laughs> and what his plan is, is he's going to get these recordings of their phone conversations, and he's going to get other people to act out the phone calls on film. Okay. So he's, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna like get them to like lip sync over the conversations because they have weird conversations. They do stupid skits and they're making up dumb songs and rapping or whatever. So so he's going to get people to act out his phone calls on film and send it to his buddy. Unfortunately for Liam Lynch, you know he's in the middle of Liverpool. He's absolutely fucking broke. All he can afford to do to act out these calls. You know, he's like, I've got nothing. All I've got is some cardboard, some old food, and the socks that I have in my room. Boom! He makes the videos using the socks that he has in his dorm room at the Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts. He makes the videos. He sends them to his friends. But the videos are really odd, really weird, real bizarre. So much so that he just decides to start sending them out like, hey, you know, MTV should at 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 this moment in 1993, uh, they play really weird things in between commercial breaks and in between music videos. They yeah. play really bizarre things, and so maybe they'll want these weird videos. That so was, he said, "That was the origin of Joe's apartment." Yeah. So he sends them. He sends his weird sock videos to MTV and MTV Europe. MTV outright rejects them. These are weird too weird for us uh mtv america will definitely never be in the sock business but mtv europe loves them they're like oh uh, we care less about our uh, about uh, our uh, we're less stuck up in mtv europe we love your weird sock videos and they take all of them yes and in, in 1996, they start airing these bizarre sock puppet clips in between music videos. They become massively popular in England, so much so that MTV Prime in America, they eventually come a knocking. And voila, the MTV TV show Syphil and Ollie was born. A side note, do you, do you know who started MTV and it may be a Mandela effect for you? No, who started MTV? Mike Nesmith. Okay, that's really fucking weird. Mm. That is really fucking weird. That makes sense, though, because when I was young watching MTV in the beginning, in the early days of MTV, uh, they were so sort of desperate for content that it didn't matter what type of music it was, you know? Yeah. So it would be like, hey, we're MTV live at the Monkees concert. They would do weird shit like that. Mm -hmm. And that's why Davy Jones early on used to appear. Remember Davy Jones when he was trying to be metal? <laughs> yeah, Davy Jones and like they would be live at a Frank Zappa concert and shit. Like they were really desperate for any music period. Yeah. Yeah. We're here with Kenny Rogers. <laughs> yeah. So Syphil and Ollie lasted for two seasons. Uh, three seasons were filmed, but MTV sat on the third season. Syphil and Ollie set a record for the cheapest TV show to ever make. Nice. Literally, the show was Liam Lynch, Matt Croco, a camera, a laptop, and a green screen 
in Liam Lynch's garage in L.A. It was literally the cheapest TV show to make. This is a major network. This is MTV. And they were showing, giving like prime time slots to a TV show that cost about $1,000 an episode. Yeah. That is phenomenal. That is a phenomenal. Oh, not, even, phenomenal. not even, not, not even. Yeah, like thousand less than a thousand. Less than a thousand. Less like, than a thousand. Like the first episode would be your biggest expense. Yeah. Like if you're starting from nothing, then you got to buy the camera, you got to buy the green screen, you got to buy the socks. Yeah. Maybe <clears throat> some also, lights. Also like build like weird sets and, and yeah. And the CGI that they would use was was pretty impressive for back in the day, for like 93. Yeah. For like 96, 98, 2000, like when, when the show was on. So, 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 bare freaking bones, the show. The show also set a record for the lowest rated MTV TV show of all time. Really? Okay. No one saw Syphil and Ollie on TV. No one wanted to. It, it, to be fair, I love Syphil and Ollie, but it was an experimental TV show uh, made for nothing featuring two dudes playing with sock puppets. It's not for everybody. <laughs> I understand it's not freaking uh, Big Bang Theory, you know? Yes. But that has to be painful for Liam Lynch. You know, he, he created the lowest rated show in MTV history. The executives at MTV were embarrassed as fuck with the show. It was a source of shame for them. There are interviews with executives when they would be like, yes, that was the worst period of my life. <laughs> when we had Syphil and Ollie on TV. So, so yeah, it's cemented. It cemented an idea subconscious in MTV, I think, because Syphil and Ollie was so experimental and so out there that I think subconsciously MTV, from that point on, they were like, okay, let that be a lesson to us. Let's stop being bold. Yes. Yeah, um, if there's one thing Syphil and Ollie taught us, it's to not experiment. Maybe we should take less risks and play more things that that people want to see as opposed to things we think that people should see. What is this brand new show? A guy named Johnny Knoxville stapling his butt together? Sure, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, each episode of Syphil and Ollie would usually have two songs in them, and each song was usually short, like a minute or a minute and a half. Cute and funny, but forgettable little songs that he would just make up off the corner of his head, and and and, and that him and his friend would kind of experiment and 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 just make these bizarre, weird, crazy ass little songs. Fake blood, the girl in the spooky car, United States of whatever, tiny little forgettable songs that they would just throw into the into the show. MTV at the time. It's it's ridiculous now to see the shows on TV, but back in the day, if you were a show on MTV, you had to have music in it. You had to have yeah. music videos in the show. That's why if you buy uh, Beavis and Butthead on DVD, each episode is now like 12 or 14 minutes on a DVD because they can no longer afford the rights to all the music videos that would <laughs> be part of Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Like, how was MTV going to release this episode of Beavis and Butthead? How are we going to get the rights to this music video from a band that doesn't exist, mm -hmm. from members, half of which are dead, from a record company that doesn't exist anymore? You would have to research that, because if that's the situation, the, the rights yeah. may just be up for grabs. Yeah, that's why it took, like, forever for MTV to release a, a DVD of the sketch show, The State, because The State wanted to just be a sketch comedy show. But MTV said, no, all of the shows on our network have to have music. So at, in the background of every episode, we're going to add popular music. Oh, God. 
So now people are, so then people like a decade later were like, oh man, all of the people in MTV's The State are now super famous. When are you going to release the DVD of The State? And MTV's like, oh, we would love to, but it's impossible. <laughs> it is physically impossible. They literally had to redub every episode of The State. Wow. And they got the members of The State like a decade and a half older than when the show aired dubbing over themselves so that they can cut out all the like cranberries and smashing pumpkin songs that were in the background of these episodes. Okay. Yeah. And they will never release Sipple and Ollie because this is literally just a sh- source of shame for the history of MTV. But any- It's got to but- be on YouTube, right? Oh, yeah. It- yes, but it's the worst quality imaginable. Oh, okay. But yeah, they're all on MTV. S- including the third season that uh, MTV sat on. So Sifonoli was canceled. Liam Lynch worked on a number of other projects, including an album in- released in 2003 called Fake Songs. But But here's the thing. In 1999, Liam Lynch is working on season two of a TV show that hardly anyone saw. You know, and he's recording all of these cheesy throwaway songs. There were some episodes of Syphil and Ollie when he would have three or four songs in a single episode. He's re- he's recording a lot of tiny little songs. Yeah. For this TV show. So, uh... It, Season two comes and goes. It's soon canceled. And that's the end of that. Mm -hmm. Over three years later, someone at KROQ, the radio, the, the very popular radio station in LA. Yeah. Is, uh, uh, watching, uh, old reruns of TV shows. And he happens to catch an episode of Syphil and Ollie. He literally gets a uh, tape recorder he, he has in his house and puts it up to his television and records one song from Syphil and Ollie and then as a joke starts playing it on the air on the radio station. Yeah? So, suddenly, out of nowhere, over three years after Syphil and Ollie was canceled, one of the songs starts getting major airtime on one of the most influential radio stations in America. So much so that Liam Lynch is forced to record it as an actual single, and it reached number 34 in the U.S. music charts. (laughs) It reached number 10 in the U.K. music charts. In Australia, it was number (laughs) 6. He has a worldwide hit. With a song that was re- that is a minute less than a minute and a half, and was recorded for a TV show that no one saw. So this song is suddenly on the radio all the time, and it's from a show that no one knows. People are just <laughs> requesting, like, "Oh, oh, can you play that Liam Lynch song?" But no one knows Syphil and Ollie. No one knows the Sock Puppets. No one saw the show. Mm -hmm. it's like if suddenly now a song from season one of flight of the concords was a hit yes and it was the weirdest thing in the world to just be in california driving to work and i'm changing the radio stations and suddenly here's a song that i know and love and that no one else remembers on the radio and they're like, oh, our most requested song for three weeks in a row. It's Liam Lynch with New United States of whatever. And at that point in time, I'm like, okay, someone's fucking with me. <laughs> How is it that a song that I love from a show that I love that no one else knows is suddenly a hit on the radio? How is this possible? Yes. No uh, one it's knows. It's a valid question. Show. No one knows this TV show, but how did this TV show produce a hit song? Mm-hmm. That makes no sense to me. The song itself, United States of Whatever, even references other characters in the show. Really? Okay. I'm gonna have yeah. to I'm gonna have to track that down. There's a really cool character called Zaffo and he's like the lead guitarist and lead singer of a band and everybody's always like oh Zaffo yeah he just called us 
And like Zappho would call Syphil and Ollie and talk to them. And Syphil and Ollie would be so blown away that Zappho, uh, this big popular musician, called them so that the next caller on the show would be like, I am Insectatron and my armada is coming to Earth. But Syphil and Ollie wouldn't be paying attention to the call because they still can't believe that Zappho called them. <laughs> It's super villain, like, excuse me, I don't think you're paying attention. I'm trying to tell you that my alien armada is coming to destroy Earth. Wait, did you guys say Zappho? Yeah, dude, he just called us. Oh, wow. Is he <laughs> playing tonight? Can you get me tickets? <laughs> so it's this stupid song about... Uh, 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 about you know this is my united states of whatever and like screw you i don't care but then one of the last verses is is just suddenly then up comes zaffo i'm like yo zaffo what's up he's like nothing i'm like that's cool <laughs> that verse is in the song and and it's and everybody is like singing along to that and loving it and i'm like you people don't know who zaffo is how is this on the radio <laughs> how does everybody love this song when none of you know the show i'm so confused <laughs> that's because in between Syphil and Ollie, the TV show, and the hit song, United States of whatever, that must have been when I jumped from yeah. one universe to jump. That was when it happened. That was the point. Okay. Yeah. That was the point when I jumped. It's you, all right there in that song. Do you remember what time it was? No. It was some, it, it, it must have been sometime between 1999 and 2003. Like I, it was, it was like 2004, I think, and I was in receiving at the bookstore in California, returning some books, and then suddenly the I turn on the radio. I'm like, I'm going to be back here for a while of uh, uh, returning books. I'm going to turn on the radio, and United States of whatever is on the radio, and I start singing along, and it takes me about 45 seconds to realize what I'm singing along to, because it's one of those things that only I know and that no one else remembers, and I'm like, wait a second, am I listening to my iPod? No, I'm listening to the radio. <laughs> Why is this on the radio? And they say, yes, our most requested song for three weeks in a row, it's Liam Lynch with United States of whatever. I love that song. Don't you love that song? Yes, I do. I know all the lyrics. Ha <laughs> ha. And I'm like, no, this is a trick. <laughs> how could how could one of the lowest rated shows in the history of cable television produce a hit single? That 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 makes no sense. I, I totally agree. Yeah. They are there was diametrically opposed. Bros. It, 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 yeah, it, it makes no sense to me. But this this is this is a weird one. United States of whatever. It played on the radio a lot. Around 2003 and 2004 and 2005, you would hear it on the radio, and it was weird. In fact, there's video out there on YouTube that I tracked down of Liam Lynch playing this that song on stage with the Foo Fighters at one of their concerts. Really? All right. Yeah. That's, that's fucked up. Yeah, and it's, it's Liam Lynch playing it with uh, Dave Grohl on the drums. <laughs> On stage in front of like hundred thousand people, <laughs> cheering and going nuts. And what's he so, doing now? Uh, he's still directing. He's still occasionally releasing songs. the 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 most amazing thing happened in like two thousand and twelve or two thousand and fourteen. I don't remember when, but um, Nerdist announced that they would be or was it vulture first and then nerdist but anyway one of these uh, uh online creators of uh original product hired liam lynch and said hey what do we have to pay you to make new episodes of syphil and ollie on youtube nice so they did a couple of episodes of uh, uh new episodes of syphil and ollie and uh, it was great because 
it, it shows you like the Syphil and Ollie studios and it's Ollie who was voiced by Matt Crocco. And literally he's just been frozen in that empty studio since 1999. <laughs> comes along and goes, dude, hey, okay. So there's this thing called the internet. I have this great idea of how we can get back uh, it, 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 doing the show. There's a thing called the internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so for a while they were reviewing fake video games. Okay. And each episode had a song, and it was yeah, it was like back in the old days. It was it, it was really weird. So for a while he was doing episodes of Simple and Ollie for Nerdist. Cool. Okay. And uh, despite the fact that the Tenacious D movie bombed. He he still does some like directing and some. I, some... I liked the Tenacious D movie. Did you see it? it uh, yes, he helped write and direct that. And the reason why he is because all of these studios and all of these directors and stuff were like, okay, so we're going to make a Tenacious D movie. This is what we want you to do. And Liam Lynch was the first person to say, okay. A Tenacious D movie, what do you guys want it to be? Mm -hmm. And Tenacious D said, literally, we've had hundreds of meetings. You're the first person to say that. (laughs) We never thought of what we wanted to do. Everyone has just been telling us what we should do. Yeah. So that's why he was hired to do that. And I believe that Sarah Silverman hired him to help uh, to, to write and direct her movie solely because she was just a big Syphil and Ollie fan. Really? Okay, that's yeah. cool. So, yeah, so he gets work here and there. He, I just downloaded one of his songs called uh, called This Party Has Too Many Dicks. <laughs> I just downloaded that like a week ago. He just released that a week ago. So he still like records songs and stuff like that. So yeah. and get work and stuff. So so he's he's still doing things, but but no, he had a weird, bizarre hit in 2004 and 2005, and I can't explain it. It It is very mysterious, I, I have to admit. Yeah. I follow him on YouTube. For a while, he was recording, um, like, once a week, he would record vape review videos as a fake vapor. <laughs> You'd be like, "Hey, what's up? My name is my name is Clint. I'm gonna re- be reviewing this new vape kit. First, a little bit about myself. Uh, I just got off of probation. Big fan of vaping. Yeah, those were really fun. I liked those videos. Yeah, Basically, he just creates whatever he wants to, releases it on YouTube. It, he he's an amazing man, and I love him. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the song, United States of whatever. It 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 started a it it set a record in England. It was the shortest song up to that point. It was the shortest song to ever hit the top 10 charts in England. Okay. Cuz it's 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 like a minute and 15 seconds. It was like super duper short. Yeah. So so yeah, that's that's Mandela effect moments but, in music history. Yeah. It's also a little bit of uh, Steve's historical approximations. Syphil and Ollie was an amazing show, and I loved it. But not Stormtroopers of Death short. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. 